Hey guys, welcome to the homestead. So today I thought I'd jump on here. I haven't done a video in a few days and I wanted to give you guys an update what's going on. It's Friday today and we uh, just I just got done this morning making cheese and butter and tonight I'm going to be making dinner. It's going to be, if you're ever familiar with the spaghetti factory, tonight we're going to have brown butter mazithra spaghetti because I have mazithra cheese and I just made fresh butter today so that's going to be the brown butter. Uh, used to love going to Spaghetti Factory and eating some brown butter mazithra cheese spaghetti. So <laughs> that's what's on cap for tonight. And um, got the fire going. It's cold. It was like, I found it like 12, 13 degrees last night. It was really cold. The pipes are all turned off and they're drained. The lines are drained. So we have no water in the house right now. And hopefully it's going to get warm enough today. I can turn the lines on for a little bit and get some water and fill up some of my water containers that I've been using throughout the last two days. So anyway, I want to take you out here and show you some wine racks that Tim has made uh, for some of our wine bottles and uh, just kind of go through and show you what I got. So I showed you this one in a previous video. This is going to go into the wine cellar that uh, we are building right now. And the next step in our wine cellar is to get the waterproofing done and the drainage lines in. And that's going to happen here pretty shortly. But, and we'll do a video on that coming up soon. But in the meantime, Tim is busy working building wine racks. And so he's got a number of these done. There's two of them set here. We have this one that's made out of cedar. And I believe he put some linseed oil on this one. And then he put this one together uh, the other day. And I put some wine on it just for this video to show you what we have in our current cellar right now. <laughs> so um, I figure I'll give you a rundown on those, but I'll give you a close up of this one. I'd like at some point to be able to sell these things. Tim, I don't think is so keen on it. Well, I'm trying to talk him into it. And what I really like is for him to one day uh, or, you know, tr show the boys how to build some. Because I, I know my youngest son, Caleb, he is very much into working with his hands. I think he'll be a great woodworker. And he's already learning a lot, so much from Grandpa, uh, because Grandpa shows him things and, and he teaches him things. And, and I would really like it if, I really think it'd be a good match for Caleb, my youngest, to learn woodworking. And something like this, we can harvest the wood. This this all wood here was harvested here on our homestead. I cut these trees down. I put them on the sawmill. And then Tim took it and he planed it down and worked it and fashioned it into what it is now. Just a beautiful, beautiful cedar wine rack. Just look at that. It's a beautiful wine rack. And so um, this is going to go into the wine cellar, root cellar that we're building. And I think it'd be great if we could get um, Caleb, my youngest son, to be a woodworker like Grandpa and uh, build things like this for sale out of the wood that we harvest right here on our own homestead. Because we have a lot of cedar trees here on our homestead that can be made into a number of things. And wine racks, I think would be great. Anyway, so this is another one that he built. This is also out of cedar here that we harvested on the homestead. Um, and let me show you some of the wine bottles we have on this rack and give you a close up look to it. So this is out in our mud room where these are sitting now. You can just, just take a look at that wine rack that we have there. Amazing. And then this one, he just finished the other day. And I forgot what was the workings he put on this. But um, I forgot what the finish was. But yeah, so uh, take a look at some of the wines we have. And the wine rack. This is a Nebbiolo. I'm really looking forward to this. I've never tried a wine that was made with a Nebbiolo grape before. These usually come out of Piedmont, Italy. The Piedmont region of Italy. It's northern Italy. I have never before tried a Nebbiolo grape. Um, I would really love to try the uh, Barola wines that's made with the Nebbiolo grape. But they usually are kind of pricey. <laughs> so I don't, I don't normally spend a lot of money on my wines. I try not to. This is a Nebbiolo that was, you know, actually affordable. And I'm going to wait till a night where I have steak or something to enjoy that one. This is a more of a cheap wine that I usually get at the store. It's a Chianti uh, from, uh, also from the Tuscany region. Of, this is Tuscany region of Italy. And it's made with the Sangiovese grape. I really enjoy this wine. It's really affordable. This is usually what I spend money on, you know, for wine-wise. About $10 a bottle. I don't usually buy wines that are more than $10 a bottle. So that one there. And then this one, this is a complete... Uh, this does not fit in here. And um, <laughs> this was given to me by a friend who uh, g gave me this for my birthday. 
And this is uh, from the Chateau Grand Poy Lacoste. I forgot how you pronounce that. It's a Grand Cru from the Poyac region of Bordeaux. Uh, this retails for about $120 a bottle. And um, I probably will never open this wine. Um, it'll probably be, it'll, it'll be, it'll have a nice place set aside for it in the wine cellar. Um, it's a 2015 uh, Grand Cru from Bordeaux, the Poyac region. I, I would never be able to buy something like I would never buy something like this. This was given to me as a gift. This is more of the Bordeaux wines that I drink. And this is like a $10 bottle of Bordeaux. It's basically a blend of uh, uh, probably, I think, Cabernet Franc and Cabernet Sauvignon from Bordeaux region. And this is like, you know, $10 a bottle. This is also a really nice bottle given to me as a gift by the same person who gave me this one here. And this is uh, from the Tuscany region. This is, uh, I believe, a Sangiovese grape, and this is this one retails. It's the uh, Mar Marama, Marama, and, and it's uh, retails for about seventy dollars a bottle. And so, I don't normally buy bottles that expensive. Marama from Tuscany. And uh, what else we got here on this fantastic? This is another cheap bottle of white wine. This is a Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc uh, from Bordeaux. Uh, the Protocolo from Spain. Really uh, good wine that's affordable. It's like 10 bucks a bottle or less. Um, this one, uh, Argentina Malbec. This is, again, you know, very affordable wine. Uh, the St. James, this is usually the higher end of what I spend money on for if I'm going to buy expensive wine. This one retails for about 18 20 bucks, something like that. And this is from a winery in the Ozarks. And so uh, I really enjoy this wine. It's Norton Grape. Um, and again, another Gabbiano uh, Chianti from Tuscany, the Sangiovese Grape. I really like that one. It's very cheap and it tastes fantastic. It goes great. Uh, with a lot of foods and so anyway there's my wine rack and you got a, you got a nice look of some of the wines that are going to be frequenting my wine cellar and wines that'll be in my wine cellar that probably never get drank <laughs> i just can't i can't imagine opening that uh, i can't i don't know it's just it's like too expensive what's that what's that ver what's that how's that line go in that movie dirty rotten scoundrels all these wines very old i purchased them to make certain that they were cared for properly so you got a lot of wine to drink. You can't drink them, Freddy. They're far too valuable. So you sell them? I'd never sell them. They mean too much to me. So there's my wine racks, folks. And um, I'm, I am really urging Tim to consider making more of these things. I think that he could sell them. And uh, there's a lot of people out there who love wine, uh, just like I do. And they're willing to pay for wine racks, beautiful, gorgeous wine racks, just like these that he's made with wood that we've harvested right here on our homestead. To me, that makes it special. When you can harvest something, uh, um, a resource, right on your own homestead and be able to turn that into a business and make money out of it, and not only that, but possibly, possibly pass that business on down to one of your children or grandchildren in this case, um, that's just very special, very special. And, and I think um, there's just a lot of that opportunity here um, at least in the economy that we still have today that's still somewhat functioning where people can afford to buy things like this uh, for the things that they enjoy like wine. So anyway, just want to give a video guys out to you guys because I haven't been online in a while and at least in the last week and um, I got some other videos coming out soon this next week. We're going to be doing some fun things. Um, I want to be sharing with you uh, the Misfits Market box an opening we'll be doing that sometime hopefully sooner in the future also we got some sugar cane uh, that came in uh, on a recent order uh, we usually order from a co-op every so often where we get um, rice and beans and things like that things that we use on a pretty regular basis here on the homestead when it comes to cooking and uh, there was this week on an order uh, the possibility to order some sugar cane well i just happen to have a sugar cane juicer so we'll show you that this week and we'll juice some sugar cane together and uh, enjoy that so stick around for that all right guys be sure to like and subscribe don't go before you hit that like button hitting that like button helps youtube know that we do have an audience who really does enjoy our videos and that's something special it helps the algorithm 
uh, when it comes to ranking our videos. So please do that before you go. Hit that like button. That really means a lot. And um, other than that, we'll see you next time on an American Homestead. Hey guys, I'm happy to introduce an American Homestead sponsor, Zervita Zeal. Now, first off, I only accept sponsors from products that I use and believe in. My family uses Zeal mainly because we want to ensure a healthy immune system. You see, it's made up of only whole food concentrates and includes no artificial colors, flavors, or preservatives. The included sweetener is all natural from fruit and the stevia leaf. It's gluten-free, it's vegan, and it's kosher. In 2018, my youngest son was involved in a bike accident that resulted in the surgical removal of his spleen, and that's an important part of his immune system. And because we live on a farm, you can guess that having a healthy immune system for our family is very important. Some of the included ingredients are beetroot, chicory root, turmeric, moringa, blueberries, cranberry, goji berry, milk thistle, ginseng, alfalfa, broccoli, and so much more. It's these natural ingredients that can easily be made into a powerful and tasty drink that my family can make and feel good about. So sign up and give it a try today. Every purchase you make goes to help the homestead so that we can continue to make great homesteading videos for you. Link is in the description below. Go ahead, give it a try. Hey guys, did you know you can become a patron of an American homestead? They get access to private videos and we send them gifts from the homestead that we make here on the homestead. And we also enter our patrons into special giveaways that are only available to them. And before you go, please check out these other great videos. Go ahead, click. I'll wait.